Hi, in this lesson we're going to learn how to properly replace a green screen on a phone. Let's see. Okay, so this is the footage I will show you how to replace the green screen on. Let's talk why we are using the green screen on a phone. So there are two reasons for that. If there is an object in front of the green screen, maybe your finger or anything else, we can easily key out the green color and we do not have to do any rotoscoping. So that's obvious, just like any green screen. The second reason are reflections. So the green screen allows you to keep either darker right here or usually the reflections are brighter. It allows you to keep it over our comped in footage. So it helps to sell the effect more. And this is exactly the reason why I do not like these green screens with the tracking markers on it for the phone replacement. So this is how the tracking markers look like. And if you want to keep reflections, you would have a really hard time getting rid of these tracking markers. So I prefer to have a whole green screen, no trackers, nothing else. And I track in Mocha the whole screen and a little bit more. So that way I have a clean track and it's all good to go. You don't have to mess around with removing markers or anything else. Having reflections is great, but they can cause some tricky issues. What I mean by this, let me show you what happens if I want to track it in Mocha. Enable Mocha. I will not go through the Mocha interface or any tracking. You know how to use it. There is a lesson. Check it out. Let me quickly create the tracking surface. And we want to keep only the things that are on the surface. So let's skip that finger. I think, yeah. Let's skip that one as well. Sharpen the corner. Let's turn on perspective and start tracking. Maybe let's tweak it. Doesn't matter. Let's start tracking. There you go. Check out the top left corner. You see how it starts to drift? And that is actually quite an issue for us because it doesn't allow us to track it properly. So let's quit out of the mocha. Don't save it. We can delete the mocha first. So what we have to do is try to get rid of the reflections. So we will use the key light effect for that. We'll use this effect later as well to properly key it out. But for now, all we want to do is get rid of the reflection. By the way, underneath is the screenshot we will use to replace the footage. But let's turn it off for now. And you can see these reflections right here. We will discuss the key light effect in a separate lesson, but in here, we will have a quick rundown. In the view dropdown, you have several options. And I usually use screen mat that shows you what will be keyed out and what will be semi-transparent and what would be opaque. Intermediate result, which only knocks out the color but doesn't do any tweaks with spills and anything else. And I usually use this uh, if I am keying out a real green screen, so a person in front of the green screen, but that's a topic for a separate lesson. And final result, usually you do not want to use this, especially if there is a person in front of the green screen, because you don't really have much control over the spill and the decolorization. And in general, you want to have a separate effect for that control. But in this instance, this is what we want, the final result. But meanwhile, let's change to screen mat and we can open the screen mat dropdown. So we will now use these options to get rid of the reflection. So all we have to do is turn up the clip black and that's it. Change it to final result and you can see no more reflections. But now we want it to track in Mocha and to see the effect, we want to pre-compose it, move all attributes. And also Mocha will have a really hard time tracking the black on black. So let's enter the composition, create a new solid, make it white, bring it below our footage. And now what we have is a phone with a white screen on it. I can still see some reflections, so we can even clip the black further. There you go. 
shouldn't be anything right now. Good. Now let's add the Mocha AE effect once again. Open up. And now let's create our tracking plane. Remember, we want to include the screen and a little more so it can see the edges and it will track it based on that. Turn on perspective and click track forward. Okay, let's see our track. We can even enable the grid and see if it sticks. Looks great. Okay, turn off the grid. Let's show tracking surface. Now we want to be precise with these corners. So click on view, overlays and zoom windows. And it will help you precisely uh, place these corners. From my experience, if you have semi-transparent pixels, just like here, I will always err on the side of including them instead of not including, because then we can have some issues with the uh, transparency showing up. So I will just include them. Same here. Bang. Let's grab the left corner, bottom, right bottom. And it seems it's stuck really well. Let's save it. We can rename it. Close it. Let's create the track data. Bang. Now that it's created, we can enter our precomp, delete the white solid, delete the key light, and we successfully tracked our green screen with reflections. Awesome. Let's bring our screenshot in front. So remember for Mocha AE to apply the track properly, we have to have the anchor point in the exactly same position that our tracked plane. So what we can do is either scale it to comp, pre-compose it, and then apply the tracking data, or just copy the anchor point position to our screen. So now I select corner pin support motion blur, layer export to screenshot and apply the export. Also remember, of course, if you have a screenshot for the aspect ratio to look properly, it's best if you have a screenshot for the exactly same uh, model of the phone. That's quite obvious, but I thought I would mention that. Okay, so we have it placed over our phone and it's tracking really well. But we want to utilize that green screen and we want to have these reflections. Don't worry. Now, get the screenshot, bring it under our layer. Now, we can close the Mocha AE for now. Add the key light effect. Again, let's pick the color to key out, which will be our green. And now, you can see, if I turn off the screenshot, we have reflections over it which is really nice. If I zoom in, you can see that these reflections are showing up. By the way, this is a really noisy footage, so it's not helping the key, but it's doing pretty well. Okay, so we have our first issue. If you take a look at, for example, here, turn off the key light, turn on the key light. You can see that every green, it's not super obvious in here, but take a look at this forest. It's knocking out all of our greens. And you can also see that if you go to screen mat, everything that's gray will have the transparency knocked down. And we do not want that. We want to apply the green screen only over our screen. So how do we do that? Okay, let's change to final result. We can close it for now open up the Mocha AE, click Matte and click Create AE Mask. This creates the mask from the tracking points or rather the edge of the plane we tracked. 
So we can see we have a mask created from it. Okay, so we created a mask, but now we want to use this mask for only the key light to utilize it. So in other words, we want to mask out the effect. A lot of people do not know that, but we can go to effects, key light, scroll down to compositing options, click plus, and we select our mask. And that way you can see that the key light has the mask applied and the mask is only for that effect. And you can see right here that outside of this mask, the effect is not applied. And if I turn off the key light, nothing changes except for the screen. Awesome. So let's expand our mask just a little bit to make sure we include everything. So let's click M or rather double M mask expansion, make it a few pixels. So everything's gone and voila, it's gone. Awesome. So now we successfully keyed out only the screen. So now let's try to composite in properly the screen that we have. By the way, one more thing, you can see because the footage is really grainy, our reflections are really, really grainy as well. And it kind of shows if you take a closer look. So what we can do is open up the key light effect, go to screen mat and increase the screen softness just a few pixels, maybe four or five, and it helps to get rid of that really nasty noise. Anyway, let's get back to it. So first, the most obvious thing is it's way too sharp. So let's add the Gaussian blur, turn it up, so it matches our footage. So maybe two pixels, that looks about right. We don't want it to be too sharp because it's a clear telltale sign that it's a composite. Let's open the info panel. And if you don't see the same values right here, click this button and you do not see that, but go to HSB. It will show you the hue, saturation and brightness. And this is what we want. Okay, so let's check out the brightness of our sky which is about 87 and the boats, which are the brightest spots in our image. And it's about 80%. If you hover over our white point on the screen, it's almost a hundred and we do not want that. So let's add levels effect and we can bring down the white point to about 80, 85, 84. So let's check out our white point. It's about 83, 88. It should be, I think, even darker than the sky. So that's that's about right. So we can see right here that my brightness is at about 80, while the sky is about 85. That's great. Okay, so the next obvious thing is it's too saturated. So let's add tint effect. Let's bring it down to zero first and let's check out some of the saturation on the image and I think the most saturated part are these nails. So it's about 50% tops. Yeah, that's I think that's the most saturated thing on this footage. So it's 50%. So we want to apply 50% tint effect. Uh, it's a little strong. Maybe the screen can be a little more saturated, but definitely no more than 40%. So you can see my saturation here is about 60%, 50, 60. It's a little more saturated than the uh, nail, but that is realistic, that can be possible. So last but not least, we want to add grain. And we can use add noise, but in this case, for example, and you can see that there is no grain right here and there is quite a lot of noise here. So we can use the effect match grain, change it to final output, change noise source layer to phone. Let's see how it looks. It's almost, but I think it's a little too intense. So let's knock it down to 0.5. And I think that looks quite good. So let's see the whole phone. Awesome, that looks great. So there is one more issue that bothers me. Let me show you real quick. 
you can see it right here. The reflections for some reason are really, really blue. And it could be that the person recording this was wearing a blue shirt, I don't know. And it's looking a little weird. So let's adjust that. So if I turn off the screen layer, you can see these are the blue reflections. So what we want to do is have a desaturation applied only on this part of the image. So on these keyed out reflections. How do we do that? Yep, you guessed it. We will use the effect mask. So let's create another AE mask. Let's add tint effect and we can leave it at 70, 60, 70, 60. You can see that I messed up here because I left the finger inside of the track data, but it's not a big issue. I can open up the mask we created. Let's call it tint and bring down the mask expansion and we got rid of the finger and we didn't cut into any of the reflections, so it's all good. So now we want to apply the tint mask to the tint effect, so it will only apply to the screen. Click on compositing options plus and select the tint mask. So now you can see our reflections are no longer super blue. Let's turn on our screen and see how it looks. Awesome. Looks great. So the last part is up to you. I left out uh, one more thing, which is the color matching. Screens are a tricky part because they are screens and they are a source of light. So they kind of have their own color, but we can apply the tritone effect to match our colors and decide whether we want to keep it. So let's add tritone effect bring it back to 100 for now. Let's temporarily add Gaussian blur, turn on the repeat edge pixels because we will sample colors from that layer. So for the shadows, pick that. For the highlights, pick sky and find some mid-tones, which would be something gray right here. Yeah, that looks good. Let's delete our Gaussian blur. By the way, we also want to match our black levels, but in this case, we kind of don't have to because this is really, really dark. It's only 3% and our darkest spot is right about here, which is 10%. So it's all good here. But just in case, if you need to uh, match the black levels, just use this and make it brighter. So let's get back to our tritone and you can see that it's basically our grayscale. This is a little bit bluish. This is basically black. This is a little bluish. So we can turn down the blend with original and it's a minor difference. I don't think that matters right here. And then you can, of course, watch the footage a thousand times and decide whether that's the right look you're going for. For example, I think I desaturated this a little too much, so let's change it to 35%. And I think that's the look I'm happy with. So now we successfully matched the sharpness, the brightness, saturation, noise, and we matched the color. So yeah, I like how it came out. This is our final result. Anyway, uh, play around with it. You can easily find an app in App Store or whatever you have. Just look for a green screen. Remember, tracking markers make it a little bit trickier, at least in my opinion. You don't have to agree. You can then go in and remove these markers. That's fine. And you can also key them out, but then you will have issues with reflections going away. So it's iffy, at least for me. But yeah, that's it. If you are a filmmaker and want to learn After Effects, check out the link in the description below. It is my free webinar called Top 10 Things You Can Do in After Effects as a Filmmaker. I'm sure you will enjoy it. But for now, this is it. Hit me up with any questions you might have and I'll see you in the next one.